Hello there, Sarah from 17 once again. We've now made it to chapter 10 of this Bayonetta video walkthrough on hard difficulty. And um, it's another fight against a bunch of joys. And they're not that difficult to, to kill, so the, the gameplay is going to speak a lot more than I do. Because I'm going to whip this bitch with my big chain. <laughs> I've got the lovely J-pop rendition of Fly Me to the Moon in the background, which is always a blessing when you're kicking ass in a Japanese game. But yeah, this is Paradiso, a sea of stars. Our second journey into the, the Paradiso area. And this right here is the same arena that you fought Jean in at the start of the game. On the... I think it's chapter 2, was it, where we took her on? So you'll remember this place. But obviously now we can use Witch Time, which is always a blessing. Because any fight that doesn't have Witch Time in it is a difficult fight to win. <laughs> this bitch is getting her ass kicked, which is always fun to see. There we go, good night. So yes, we're, we're teetering very close to the end of this game. I mean, there is a couple more chapters to go, but they are pretty short. And you fall down there to another village and another fight with these fucking manta rays. Such a pointless enemy. And I think when you play on normal, you don't even verse these guys on half of these fights that you do on hard. They just throw them in because they're awkward to fight. So do what you want. I'm generally against using torture attacks on these guys, but you'll probably see me do it a lot. Purely because when you get the chainsaw, it's it's fun at first, but it's about as functional as, as a piece of shit, really. So I don't use it a lot. Hence why I killed them the old-fashioned way. And there is a lot of goodies around this, this, this street area, if you're willing to look in all the nooks and crannies. But I'm generally in a rush when I'm playing through this section, so... The main gist is to run around destroying the walls. Every wall you destroy uh, turns into a cog so that you can rotate the platform. And once you do enough, you will spawn some, some enemies to fight. And there you go, another spawn, another enemy. And another fucking manta ray. Steve Irwin's wife ever plays this game, she's going to have a ton of money coming her way. Because them scars are still sore. Too, shit's too soon, man. So there's another cog on the Grand Machine, and another spawn, and another fucking manta ray. Where the hell are we in Florida? Oh my god, it's like being at Sea World. And you can tell that I'm avoiding using the tor torture attack. Not too sure if that's because I know what's coming up, because there's a, a fight with a couple of Glorious and Gracefuls. And they're always better to, to waste your torches on than those little shiz. Because they're totally not worth anything, them. If I could shoot those and kill them that way, I would, but I can't. So here we go. And I tell a lie, these are not Glorious and Gracefuls, these are the upgraded versions, whatever they're called. I'm sure somebody will correct me. So fight them the exact same way you've been fighting them across the game, the only difference being you're not going to have the luxury of witch time to cover your mistakes. A nice easy win strategy is to use the YBY move. It does massive damage, it does it very quickly and it enables you to cancel out at any moment so you can run away. These two aren't being uh, too aggressive, actually. They're kind of watching me, which is always helpful. I mean, look at that. That damage is fantastic against these guys. And this torture attack almost guaranteed to finish him off, which was a flawless fight against them. Not the hardest thing in the world to do, but it can be rare because they're very cheesy. So once you've done that, you can then go up spin the spin the dial and rotate this this platform so you can get to the next section of the level 
And I think if you rotate it once, you get to this platform that has an Alfheim portal on it. It also has a chest. And then you spin it again to get to where you need to go. So if you have no interest in getting to this platform for the chest, don't do it. Continue spinning onto the very next section and you'll avoid it altogether and save yourself a couple of precious minutes. But it is a, a broken moon pearl and as you see, it's the one I needed to, to upgrade my torture abilities. So I would definitely recommend... No thank you Mr. Alfine Portal, I don't need your services today. And then go back to rotating your analog. Which is probably why my analogs are fucked. Because of bullshit like this in games. You see that's one thing that really gets my go when I play games. That some of the mechanics that they introduce just for the sake of, of introducing a gimmicky mechanic. Like when, can you remember when you, you first played Resident Evil 4 and for me that was on the GameCube and that game to me even to this day still stands up because that was the Resident Evil that went from being the pissy survival horror bullshit to the, the full-blown survival horror action and it wasn't quite as, as soulless and unimaginative as what Resident Evil 5 was but it was a, it was a reinvigoration of a series that I'd really enjoyed and I mean, it was the golden eye of, of the Resident Evils for me. It was the one that came along and helped the series. And to get to my point, because I've fucking segued like a motherfucker. When you got grabbed by a dude, you have to wiggle the fucking analog to get him off you. And if that ain't the most bullshit mechanic ever, I don't know what is. Because all that's going to do is fuck your wrist up and give you cable tunnel and fuck your pad up so that you can't use it. And while I was gobbing off there about mechanics I hate... These stingrays just gang raped me. <laughs> just look how much damage they've took off me. And I'm probably not very pleased right now because the most pointless enemy has showed me while they're in the game. Because if you let them, they'll fuck you up. So don't let them fuck you up. If anything, do the opposite. Fuck them up because they're just an utter nuisance and I hate them. Because I'm a really happy person so I don't hate much. But when I do, I hate it with a passion. And there goes the Manta Rays. But yeah, Resident Evil 4 was a fantastic game, but that spin in the analog, man. Take that shit out. Similar to, to Dead Rising, and even in Dead Rising 2, it's like, yeah, we get it, it's Japanese, it's got gimmicks. Fuck that, take it out. Let me bash it. In fact, don't let me bash, just let me watch and let me play. I'll be happy. Right, these are, are, are imitations of the bosses you've fought so far, so. This one, as you can tell, is, is the 42 guy, and um, he doesn't have a lot of life, but he's practically the the grounded version of the boss you fought, and if you do a quick enough combo, you can kill him pretty quickly. Once again, though, I'm kind of rusty at this moment in time, so I'm not doing... I'm nowhere near as aggressive as I would have been when I played this regular, and I end up getting my ass kicked a little bit just then. But I finally switched my weapons to the Kildors, so I know now the Y, 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 that the four Ys and then the B is going to be my go-to move because it's going to destroy dudes. And this one's Temperance, uh, a boss that we've uh, finished off not that long ago. And he fights the same, the only difference is now he's, he's very, very easy, as opposed to being just kind of easy. So dodge his attack like I just did then, retaliate, and that means he's going to do the eye beam and he either does it horizontally or vertically and which way he recoils his body is going to tell you which direction he's going to fire so this guy couldn't be any easier if he tried just keep watching him guess where he's going to come because he signposts everything he does and then dick his face when, when you get him down for some reason I did a piss poor combo there I could have done so much damage there's the, the vertical one He's going to probably swing at me again. There you go. He winds up. Time it. Beat up his hand. And then get his face. I mean, there. That was the four Ys and the B attack, and that was only on his hand. So just think how much damage that would have been if I'd done it on his face. Here he goes again. He's going to do another one of the vertical eye lasers. shooting him because you can shoot him at all times to keep niggling away damage but it's kind of bitchy 
and then carry on. Right, this next section you have to jump into the opening of the house. It's rotating to throw you off, and as soon as you get inside, there's those lovely wheel things waiting to shoot at you. <laughs> and I completely forgot, so I get hurt. But once you're inside, fight them like you fought them before, kick their ass, because they're a fucking nuisance, and they're the second cheapest enemy on this game. I hate them. But luckily enough, they don't have that much room to maneuver, so you can generally get them in the corner and kill them very quickly. And there you go, little effort. This back wall can be shattered, as you can tell. And you've just got to wait for this platform to rotate so that you can jump into that green vortex. And that will take you to the next section of the level. Which is a fight against the the ships that fire missiles at you. And right there, I'm in trouble. <laughs> there you go. You win some, you lose some, and I lost that. So straight onto the mast of these ships, dodge the, the missiles, and then punish them. And as you can see, that's one missile attack, and I get two witch times off it because they fire so many missiles at you. It's not difficult to do, it's just a little chaotic, so... Ooh, that's another move these guys do. They charge a, a focused laser that they can strafe against you, but they can only hit you with it if you're directly in front of them. It is their strongest move as well, and you rarely see it if you're quick enough to get onto their masts and dismember them before they can do anything. And that was the chain move that they do, and they only generally do that when you stood on them, because it's a, a deterrent method to try and get you off their roof. It's really slow, and there you go. You can tell it's going to happen, so it's dead easy to dodge. And then you can jump up here and get this chest. You'll notice when I look across, I see another chest in the distance on one of these platforms, but I don't have the special move that lets you get it. And to get it, all you need to do is buy the ability to turn into the bird, and then you can just fly across to it. And I think it's it's a piece of broken heart or something like that. Pardon me. So go back to the platform and carry on down these celestial steps. And I think if you smash these statues, you get to fight the enemies in them, but because they're enemies that aren't just your standard angels, I had no interest in fighting them because I didn't need any more halos, and I'm not going for stylish points, so you can completely avoid them. And right here is a fight with what those statues are. And it's two of the anti-witch time fucking cart dudes. And straight away... As per usual to this part of the game, if you have the ability to torture them, do it before you get hit. And these enemies are so eager to do attack, you're probably going to get hit quite a lot. And dispatch them with the YBY, as you've seen me do numerous times throughout this video walkthrough. And just be careful, because when you knock enemies down on this game, they generally do an attack to get back up. And as you see, he did a little bit of breakdancing and I got caught in it because I was a little eager to attack him. And there the, the Bat Within saved my ass once again. It's a fantastic move, it can really help you out if you're a little late on your evades. He blocked me and countered, but I got away from that one. He blocked me again. Typically if you're playing on normal, you're not going to see so much of that because the enemies won't block you so perfectly. Although these guys are pretty challenging on every difficulty, so you're always going to get a fight. The luxury is, they're not that much different on Infinite Climax, because this is this practically is Infinite Climax without which time. So if you're playing this right now on hard, and you're thinking, yeah, this is right down my alley, then you're going to fucking love the hardest difficulty, because anybody that thinks this game is, is slow is going to get one massive shock when they play it on infinite climax because you don't have one second to breathe it's pretty crazy but thanks for watching guys and i'll see you in the next video you guys take care